Louis Sullivan, the founder of our architecture today. Louis Sullivan as an artist. Sullivan is known as the father of architecture by creating the first tall building and as we know today is the skyscraper. He de developed more than 100 building buildings and many several of these are historic landmarks. He is most famous for two famous buildings and they really changed the culture of our country and around the world. But I'll get into that later as the next slide pertains to his early childhood and adulthood. A brief look at his childhood and early adulthood. I don't want to go in depth with this so I can really inform you all about his arts and what he's known for. Um, he was born in Boston in 1856. His parents moved to Chicago in 1872. He studied at MIT, the architectural program, which that was the first in the nation at that time. And that exemplifies to me as um, a very prestigious college. And I think that pertains to all y'all too, as it is a worldwide known college. And um, he dropped out after a year to uh, practice architecture rather than study it. Louis Sullivan moved to Chicago in 1879. Um, he joined the office of Danmark Adler. The two made an incredible duo on both architect and business side of the firm, which um, Sullivan, he took care of the architects. He was the architect guru, as I like to call the title of this slide. Is He came up with all the ideas and then Adler was took care of the business sides and the two just created a firm named Adler and Sullivan Architects and I just, I think that's where it all started and that began a time that's a time where Sullivan was really famous. Um, his famous works, uh, there's not much on this slide, but the two famous buildings he de developed were the Auditorium Building and the Wainwright Building, located in Chicago and St. Louis respectively. What was famous about the Auditorium Building was it consisted of a theater, hotel, office buildings, and numerous shops. So as you can see in this picture, it's clearly different than the building surrounding it. And this was the building he's most known for. It was responsible for a cultural change, not only in America, but around the world. In 1890, the World's Fair came to Chicago strictly for this reason, for this building. And the World's Fair is, um, it was the fourth time the 400th anniversary of Christopher Columbus voyage and I just think that sh displays the level of architects that he was on during this early time period. The Wayne White building shown here in St. Louis is 10 stories high made fully of steel and as you can see it's very modern looking compared to the other buildings around it. Um, this may seem like an ordinary building, but I just think it's more important because this is how we develop our buildings today. We use steel and we build up and I think this is the building that that we look at today to, so we could mimic our skyscrapers, skyscrapers afterwards. His legacy as an architect. Um, I think he set the standard for future buildings, the buildings we see today. Um, the ones you see in this photo right here, I mean, the Wainwright building was 10 stories long and these are easily 100 stories. So I just think he um, he's not called the father of modern architecture for nothing. He, he gave us ideas and ideas to rather go up than outward and I think that just gives us endless options on what we could do in the future of architecture. And I just think he's very influ influential to architects today, and I just hope we continue his legacy.